Okay, so this time I want to quickly look at the fit function. And uh, basically this function, it takes a attribute that already exists and then it allows you to rearrange that number in proportion so I can change, make those uh, that range wider or I can make that range smaller. Let me explain. It's a little difficult to just use words for this. So let's uh, start with a grid and I, I want to make this grid just one meter by one meter I think. Yeah let's do that and I'm gonna add a whole bunch of resolution to this and then I will I think I'll use a mountain node Let's do that first of all. Okay, and the mountain node in this particular case just changes the, the Y attribute, right? You can see, so now the height has changed. And um, let me uh, just quickly go into the side here. So we can see that some of this, uh, the lowest points, for example, are below the zero and some of them are above the zero, right? Uh, but they're not going particularly high, just a, you know that's what 10 centimeters because that's about a meter right so they're pretty pretty low down anyway uh it's irrelevant uh, at this point so let's go to our um let's move back in there and this time i want to open my wrangle node again so let's go to my attribute wrangle i'm going to keep it on points and i want to be changing the position the height position so this time i'm going to go with my position dot y remember that the position attribute has an x y and z component it's actually a vector but i just want one of those vectors so i'm just using the y and i want to first of all decide okay uh i'm going to change i'm going to use the fit and as soon as i hit the the bracket here it'll give you some information it takes the value of one range and shifts it to the corresponding value in a new range okay so which value am i looking to change well i'm actually looking to change the value here of y this one here right and so i'm going to go into first of all this um uh, this position y that's the one i want first and then i'm going to look at the values the maximum and minimum values first of all of what we currently have so let's go into my mountain node and i'm if i use this little button here i can then organize it uh, with just the y and i can see that my top value is not point say 17 right and my bottom value is minus 0 0.0 let's say 5 right so let me try to remember that. Oops. Um, so I'm going to start with the minimum, which was minus 0 0.05, I think. And what was the maximum again? It was, oh yes, 0 0.17, let's say. Uh, so uh, 0 0.1, maybe let's say 1.8, just to give it a little bit of movement there. And I want to change that so that now I have the minimum will be zero and the maximum will be let's have 0 0.4 okay let's close that off and now i can see that those positions if i'm looking here those positions have changed so let me change this first of all there we go we can see that we had a bit of a jump there and let's look at that jump so it's much smaller and this is much kind of taller and if I look now at my minimum, I can see it's very close to zero and my maximum is very close to the 0 0.4. Uh, so, and I can change this number around so I can make these higher again. So there we go, 0 0.6, etc. right? And so what this is doing is just taking these, this range here and it's now creating a new range using these numbers. And in this case, the, the shift between the lowest and the highest is going to be more more dynamic and a bit more dramatic right uh okay uh, so let's look at a way that i can not have to keep modifying this number here because it's it's a little bit annoying so let's say that i want to have a channel and it's going to be a float 
and I want this to be maximum. Now, if you're not sure what's happening here, if you just look at the previous lesson, you will you will see what I'm doing here. And um, yep, yeah, that'll be good. It's all got resets to zero. I then click this, and I can now move this, and I can change the position of that. Okay. And so now I'm creating this within a new range. And, and this is important for many reasons. You'll use this fit function in all kinds of things that you do in Houdini. So I just wanted to show you a really basic use of that. Uh, I hope that that's useful. So remember that you're first putting in the attribute followed by two numbers, which is the minimum and maximum of the current thing that we've got here, which is the, the lowest and highest point, of course in this particular example and then the, that new range now, i might want some of that range to go below the 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 ground plane here and uh and of course i could maybe make that minus one and then we want to see again a much bigger shift and we see that drop in where some of these numbers are now very close to minus one okay happy days all right, so if you have any questions or comments, of course, leave them below. Hopefully I can help with some of that. And we're going to be using a bit more VEX here and there. Uh, so I thought it's important that we start to get a little bit used to uh, this part of Houdini. Okay, you guys have a great day. Bye bye.